big thanks to Victor and uh, for inviting me. I have the difficult charge of discussing all the many complications of hip arthroscopy in 10 minutes and a little bit about how to avoid them. I've received uh, consultant income research support and miscellaneous non-income support from Arthrex. This is a summary of the three biggest series reporting complications in hip arthroscopy. The first by Ricky Villa, the second by Dr. Bird, and the third by Dr. Sampson. And you can see that there are a large number of complications that have been reported, including various neuropraxias, uh, instrument breakage or failure, failure of adequate access, vaginal tear, trochanteric bursitis, portal bleeding, portal hematoma, arthrotomy, infection, intraabdominal fluid extravasation, scrotal skin necrosis, heterotopic ossification, scuffing, and one arguable case of avascular necrosis of the femoral head. Uh, Dr. Elizabeth Terry has also given us a great review of the complications of treatment of FAI and core of this year. In compiling this talk, I divided complications into those that you can avoid, those that you can at least minimize, and the rare but the terrible. And we'll also discuss a little bit about some aspects of safe technique to try to avoid them. So the complications you can avoid, I would uh, include scuffing of the articular cartilage, labral penetration, anchor penetration of the cartilage, and under resection or over resection in FAI. This is a large scuff you see on the femoral head, and you can see uh, this is in a revision. The femoral head has tried to uh, insert some fibrocartilage, but has failed to completely heal this, and the patient is left with a painful trough uh, from a scuff. Scuffing is probably one of the most common and most underreported complications in hip arthroscopy, and it's frequently seen in revisions. It, scuffs can be avoided by ensuring proper distraction, by a safe access technique, which we'll discuss more on later, and by use of a light touch with both the instruments and with the arthroscope itself, which may be the most common offender. Labral penetration most commonly occurs with the puncture of the labrum with the first portal, which is inserted fluoroscopically. Badalak and Keen reported on, at AOSSM on 250 patients with a 20% incidence of labral puncture. Uh, with the uh, technique that Dr. Bird has described and that we'll embellish upon in this uh, talk, we've had a 0.33% incidence, uh, so I think this is a largely avoidable complication. Articular penetration of anchors. Uh, this nightmare seen in this picture will inevitably cause a poor outcome in the patient, and I think that articular penetration can usually be prevented by achieving multiple arthroscopic perspectives during anchor insertion and by visualizing the articular surface throughout the drilling and the insertion process to make sure that you don't penetrate. In approaching FAI, when we treat a cam lesion, if we under-resect, we may be left with residual impingement. But if we over-resect, we may actually cause loss of the suction seal by disrupting contact with the labrum. We may cause catching of a sharp edge of the osteoplasty on the labrum, and we may cause an incongruent joint. In addressing the pincer lesion, if we under-resect, again, we may leave residual impingement, but if we over-resect, we may actually create dysplasia, or worse yet, destabilize the hip and cause a dislocation. So incomplete reshaping in FAI, this is a patient who had a labral debridement arthroscopically in 1999 before we were performing arthroscopic treatment of FAI, and she actually had eight years of relief and ran several marathons. Uh, her impingement symptoms returned eight years later due to her retroverted acetabulum, seen in the crossover sign here. But she was successfully treated with the revision arthroscopy and rim trimming. So incomplete reshaping may be the most common reason for revision hip arthroscopy. But it's quite treatable in revision most of the time because no major bridges have been burned. In contrast, over-resection of FAI, as seen in this picture of uh, quite aggressive osteoplasty, creates a different problem. So in this osteoplasty, what might have been spherical might have looked like this. The resection that was taken looked like this, and this is a very uh, hard problem to treat for us arthroscopically. This patient had catching of that sharp edge against the labrum and also felt instability in various positions. We believed when that part of the osteoplasty entered the joint and disrupted contact with the labrum. Over-resection is probably increasing in incidence as more surgeons undertake FAI, and it's difficult to treat in revision because bridges may be burned. We can't make new bone where bone has been resected, which leads us to the thought that perhaps it would be better to err toward under-resection than toward over-resection. That'll bring us to complications you can minimize. Uh, these may include heterotopic ossification, DVT, and neurologic injuries. This is one of my own patients after, about six months after an 
uh, acetabular rim trimming, the patients developed uh, recurrence of impingement type symptoms and obviously had this very large piece of heterotopic ossification off the acetabular rim which was impinging on the femoral neck. Successfully treated afterward with a revision resection. Randelli reported on uh, 300 uh, patients who had a hip arthroscopy with a 1.6% incidence of HO and noted that only the patients who had failed to have prophylaxis developed HO. Prevention may include NSAIDs, aspirin, and avoidance of bony debris during resection by an inflow outflow technique or by appropriate use of suction. Neurologic uh, injury, according to the three studies I started the talk with, have an overall incidence of 1.2%. Most are temporary, but permanent injuries are catastrophic, and these may be prevented by limitation of traction time, a well-padded perineal post, and securing the feet in such a way that the force forces are distributed around the foot and the ankle. Bushnell reviewed the literature in 5,500 cases and found a 0% DVT or PE rate. Uh, in our own series, we have approximately a 1% rate of thromboembolic disease. And in comparing notes with several of my colleagues who are high volume hip arthroscopists, this is a fairly familiar number. Uh, the rare but terrible complications may include femoral neck fractures, dislocations, or intra-abdominal fluid extravasation. Femoral neck fracture may be caused by over-resection of a cam or early weight bearing. Dr. Matsuda reported on dislocation postoperatively and suggested that this may be avoided by avoiding over resection of the rim, preserving or repairing the capsule, and by labral preservation, repair, or reconstruction, all three of which are dedicated toward uh, preserving the static restraints of the hip and avoiding uh, dislocation. Intra-abdominal fluid extravasation is a rare but potentially catastrophic complication which has caused at least one cardiac arrest. It can be prevented by avoiding hip arthroscopy and acetabular fractures, and Dr. Sampson in a personal communication relayed uh, three principles, which include use of an inflow-outflow sy system, feeling the abdomen every 15 minutes, and frequent checks of anest uh, with the anesthesiologist of oxygenation. So the safe technique involves several aspects, and it starts with positioning with a well-padded perineal post, protection of the genitalia, and limitation of traction time to less than two hours. When we access the joint, this is uh, along the lines of what Dr. Bird had uh, described in his earlier article, we can use the spinal needle in such a way that we protect both the labrum and the femoral head. So our initial insertion uh, starts with the flat part of the spinal needle toward the femoral head to avoid scuffing. We then vent the joint and allow air into the joint, <coughs> withdraw the spinal needle again so that we reinsert it, now with a better chance of avoiding the labrum. This time we insert it with the flat part of the bevel initially toward the labrum to pass the labrum as we insert through the capsule. Now we flip the bevel and the flat part is now facing the femoral head so that we can avoid the next problem which can be scuffing. We insert the guide wire through the spinal needle and the cannula over the guide wire with care to angle the cannula away from the femoral head again to avoid scuffing. In FAI we plan the bony resections preoperatively. Use intraoperative fluoro extensively to make sure that we follow those bony resections we've so carefully planned. And we may consider the principle first do no harm. Dr. Bird has given us 10 year results with labral debridement alone and noted that they were quite good. Uh, so I might suggest that perhaps it's better to under resect or even ignore FAI than to over resect which creates problems which are difficult to address. Postoperatively we may use HO prophylaxis and protect the weight bearing. I would suggest that there's a substantial learning curve in hip arthroscopy. We'll present our data on that learning curve at the AOS this spring. But with specific training in hip arthroscopy, most complications are avoidable. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ben.